Hello and a very warm welcome to yet another scintillating edition of the program CAC Weekly. A weekly program that keeps you abreast on the activities and the achievement of the Corporate Affairs Commission. My name is Amina Jibro. Coming up, as the Corporate Affairs Commission continues to digitize operations, we take a look at the Commission's processes. And as workers around the globe celebrate May Day, Labour leader predicts a better future for CAC staff. We'll be right back after this break. Do stay with us. Welcome back. We begin with labor matters as the International Labor Day or May Day is a day dedicated to workers across the world. It is also called the International Day of Workers or International Labor Day. Now, May Day celebrates workers and encourages them to be aware of their rights. International Labor Day and May Fest is a public holiday in many countries. According to the office holidays.com in Nigeria, May Day as a public holiday was first declared by the People's Redemption Party PRP government of Kano State in 1980. It became a national holiday on May 1st, 1981. The International Workers' Day is marked with a public holiday in over 80 countries. Now, the first May Day celebrations focused on workers and it took place on May 1st, 1890, after its proclamation by the first International Congress of Socialist Parties in Europe on July 14th, 1889, in Paris, France, to dedicate May 1st every year as the Workers' Day of International Unity and Solidarity. As the COVID-19 pandemic regulations begin to ease out, at least in our region, the Nigerian workers on Saturday, 1st May 2021, across the country, turned out en masse to celebrate Workers' Day. Now, staff of the Corporate Affairs Commission, under the umbrella of the Senior Staff Association of Statutory Corporations and Government-Owned Companies, SASCOG, also joined thousands of their counterparts who gathered at the Abuja Eagle Square to celebrate the Workers' Day. The SASGOG CAC branch president, Comrade Suleiman Gire, spoke to CAC Weekly at the outing. As we are all aware, 1st of May is regarded as a, a Workers' Day worldwide. So Nigeria has celebrated uh, Workers' Day on the first of Saturday, 1st of May 2021. We in Abuja here, we celebrated at the Eagle Square. Uh, despite the fact that we are in a COVID period, uh, the celebration this year like, is a very unique one because uh, during the COVID time, the COVID protocol was observed. Uh, many people were not in attendance. Uh, at least the federal government has given the organized label uh, to use 50% capacity of the Eagle Square. So the labor unions has distributed uh, representations of uh, the uh, May Workers' Day this year to all uh, their affiliates. Uh, the Minister of Labor has represented uh, the presidents of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So we went there, we, we had a mark pass and uh, there was a speech by the presidents of the organized labor. Uh, what is really coming for the CAC staff uh, in particular, by God's grace, we are looking at the improvement of uh, the welfare of the staff, particularly uh, the wages. Uh, if things goes fine, uh, if the revenue improves, we are going to liaise with the management to see how we can uh, review the wages of the commission. Yeah, the staff welfare matters like uh, the health issue, the health insurance scheme, and the training of the staffs uh, is being talked by the by the members of the SASGOC and the management. So the managements are willing to improve on such welfares uh, anytime soon. And now let's talk about registration. The digitization process of the Commission has continued to gain more acclaim as more and more customers take advantage of the online system, which many judge as easier and faster. Enjoy this video as it makes you freely navigate the company's registration portal to register your company seamlessly. Company registration. To begin, reserve the company name that you intend to register and then proceed to click on Start Registration to begin. Step 1. Enter the details of the company. Click on Save and Continue. Step 2. Add the objects of the company. Click on Save and Continue. 
step three, on the articles of association, you can either create your own articles of association or simply adopt the default articles of association provided. You can also edit each part of the default articles of association to fit your company's purpose. Click on save and continue. Step four, on the directors, enter the details of at least one director. If you want to hide your residential address from public record, click on the hide residential address from public record toggle button. Click on save and continue. Step five, under secretary, this requirement is optional for small companies and you may skip the step by clicking on the click here link button to proceed. However, if you wish to add a secretary, click on the add secretary button, enter the details of the secretary and click on save and continue. Step six, understatement of issued share capital. Add the share details and enter details of proprietor and click on save and continue. Note, you must allot the entire issued share capital. Step seven, on the persons with significant control. Enter the particulars of the person with significant control of the company. Step eight, understatement of compliance. If you are an applicant or an accredited agent other than a legal practitioner, fill in your details and click on save and continue or you can skip this step. On the document upload, scan and upload all the documents labeled yes under the if required column and where the documents labeled optional applies to you, please scan and upload to avoid a query on your application. Click on save and continue to preview. Step nine, preview your entries and if satisfied, click on the proceed to payment in order to make payment. Remember to remain on the remitter page after you have received a confirmation of payment. Step 11, after payment, you will be redirected to your dashboard where you will make payment for your stamp duty. After making payment, your application will enter the pending panel on your dashboard on the registration. When your registration has been approved, your certificate will be automatically generated on your registered panel where you can download and print it. That's indeed lovely. Now for more education, CAC Weekly caught up with Nidia Justin Biraul, Director Commission Secretariat, who takes us round the Commission's processes. Enjoy watching. Good to have you again. Thank you for having me. All right. Now let's um do a kind of a recap is it a recap or a repeat for especially for um those who might want to start registering their company now or who are about to register their company um so uh, under the crp um the company registration portal that was launched in january this year um what is the first step they need to take well like you rightly said yeah. uh, a distinction is yeah. often drawn between yeah. accredited agents Mm. and uh, general uh, members of the public mm. that want to use the portal. The emphasis is usually on the general users mm. because it is assumed that accredited users uh, savvy uh, or have a lot of knowledge in ICT, mm. so they may not require uh, a lot of enlightenment. Mm. But for the general users, uh, our advice usually will be that uh, they should read the user guide and uh, what is also called frequently asked questions. Mm. Those uh, resources are available on uh, our website. Mm. And uh, the idea is that if you read those uh, resources, mm. uh, you will find it easier to navigate the CRP and you will minimize a lot of errors mm. that uh, could occur. Then uh, having said that, uh, we want to say that if you want to register a company, what you need to do first is to open an account with, on the portal. Then when you open an account, you use the account to apply for name reservation, or in other words, uh, call availability. Okay. And once you have gotten the approved name of the availability, mm. you use the approved name to fill the online form. When you fill the online form, you submit. Then uh, a review officer at the back end will look at the 
uh, application and if it is in order mm. it will be approved and within 24 hours the company will be registered and your certificate will be sent to your email box with the relevant QR code mm. for confirmation. Uh, in between the process you will reach a stage in which you will be required to pay the stamp duty fees and the filing fees okay. and it is still done on the same portal that mm. is uh, CRP. Mm. Unlike before now, when you have to uh, navigate through uh, what we call the CRP and the Digidoc, now it has been consolidated on one platform, which is the CRP. Just how easy is the portal for a first time coma? Well, it's user friendly <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because it is uh, one step at a time. Okay. Yes. Now, we also understand that there are names that are restricted, and on the portal, it, it, it flags off the red uh, flag once you put a restricted uh, name. But people want to find out, why are some names restricted? Well, the restrictions are placed by the law, okay. and uh, it is for strategic reasons. Mm -hmm. Names, for instance, that will suggest uh, government interest in the company, mm -hmm. or names that will be otherwise misleading to the members of the general public are usually restricted. So the restrictions are placed by the law and the system has been configured to recognize those names. So as soon as a person enters uh, a name that is restricted, mm. the system will automatically draw his or her attention to it so that it will now be required to apply for what is called consent. Okay. Uh, of the registrar general mm. just within the same platform also okay, okay. yes mm. what are these names that are restricted uh, for instance when you are a private person and uh, you use a name that will suggest that uh, a government has an interest in the company mm. for instance you say uh, ABZ national company or okay. XYZ state enterprises mm. which is not or you say uh, uh northern nigeria northern nigeria development company mm. uh, that will suggest that uh, uh states in the north have an interest in that company so we look at such names where it creates a wrong impression mm. then you will be required to convince the commission that indeed the government has an interest if it doesn't, then it will be required to refresh the name. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, for some people who think that after registration, that's the end. When their registration is concluded and they have a certificate, that's the end. They don't know that they, are, they have to make annual um, returns. And so let's talk about the annual um, returns for those who will just register and believe that that's the end. I have a certificate and I can operate business. No annual returns. Well, uh, uh, th uh, that is a wrong impression yeah. because uh, once the company is registered, mm -hmm. it assumes the status of a legal person. So, and uh, it is required that periodically, in fact, every year, mm -hmm. you come and file what is called the annual return mm -hmm. to indicate that you are in business. So, uh, once you fail to file the annual return, you are sending a message to the general public mm. that you are inactive and therefore not in operations. Okay. So we will uh, always advise that uh, uh, the companies that are up and running should always file their annual returns and not only annual returns. If there are changes also that have occurred in the course of running mm. uh, the company, mm. they should always inform the commission. Changes such as in the composition of directors mm. or where some investors have uh, opted out and sold their shares mm. to other incoming ones mm. they are required to notify the commission mm. so that uh, members of the public that may have reason to deal with those companies can always find those information mm. readily available with the commission okay uh, we don't understand that on the portal right now if you don't make your annual returns um your company will be uh, your company will indicate inactive yeah yes and so so that's one leg of the question if the person whose company 
is inactive and he decides to make his annual returns, including the penalty, how long will it take for his company to be placed on the active um, note? Well, the process of annual return actually requires that you fill the online form mm. and then uh, you forward or you attach mm. an abridged version of the financial uh, statement. Mm. Then uh, the application will be reviewed online also. Mm. And uh, if there are no issues, uh, it will be approved. And what is called uh, annual return acknowledgement letter will be sent to your email box. Mm. So uh, when that letter is sent, uh, the name of the company will be removed from uh, inactive to active. from the status of <laughs> inactive to active. <laughs> yes. But how long will that take? Uh, ordinarily, uh, after you have received uh, the letter of acknowledgement, mm. it's not supposed to take more than 24 hours okay. for the other department to reflect the appropriate status mm. on the commission's website. Okay. But should, in case that has not been done, we will always advise that uh, on receipt of the annual, retirement, uh, annual return acknowledgement letter, if your status is still indicating inactive mm. then you needed to contact us either through the email or through uh complaint uh line or what we call help lines okay on the platform okay you also talked about if you change directors you are supposed to notify um the commission how often can a company change the directors well there is no limit there is no limit as to how often well that's look at the director's face uh, and you say you don't like the face and then you change no, it's, uh, as it is assumed that uh, uh, the owners of the company should take their time okay. uh, to appoint the person that they think could give them value uh, in administering the, the company. Mm. So in every situation, it's not <laughs> conceived that uh, uh, there should be frequent change mm. of directors. But the law also allow you to change directors mm. if there is need for it. Okay. You can add, you can remove. Mm. So either way, it is considered as change in the composition of directors. Okay. Can an agreed director take the company to court? Yes, he can. Okay. Particularly on, in, uh, when his personal rights are violated. Mm. Okay. Then uh, a distinction is usually made between his personal rights mm. and the rights that pertains to the company. Mm. So for rights that are personal to him at any point in time, he can ventilate the, uh, his uh, right. Mm. But for rights that involve the uh, company, mm. there are certain restrictions. All right, now let's go to the exit um, strategy. Um, uh, for people who will say, I'm no longer interested um, in the company anymore, or those who want to fold up their company. What is the exit strategy under Karma 2020? Well, uh, for the one that will be initiated by uh, the commission, the, the owner, okay, the, the owner, owner of the company, okay. there are two main ones now. One uh, is that uh, you can do what is called voluntary winding up. Uh, the other one is you can apply for striking off of the name okay. uh -huh, which is a, 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 a new mm. uh, insertion in the act it's mm. a novel innovation mm. in the act before now uh what we call voluntary striking off was not available for managers of the company but that has been made possible under Kama 2020. so if at any point in time uh, one decides not, no longer to have the company, uh, he will do what is called voluntary liquidation. Then the other one, voluntary striking up, will be available if the person has not carried on any business mm. since he has registered the company. So mm. that distinction should always be drawn. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then the one that this commission will do. Well, the commission, uh, like any other person, can apply that a company be compulsorily wound up. Okay. Yes. But yes. that's after notification? 
yes, if there is uh, a reason, okay. maybe public policy reason, why uh, the, co the commission thinks the company should no longer exist, mm. then uh, it can apply for uh, compulsory liquidation. And that is usually through judicial process. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. As we wind down, um, since the CRP, that's the company registration portal, since it was open in, in January this year, up to date, what is the biggest challenge that the commission is contending with? Well, the biggest challenge has been uh, actually uh, what we would regard as uh, uh, maybe uh, lack of familiarity with the new process. You will find often that uh, people that apply for uh, registration mm. get stuck yes. <laughs> <laughs> along the line. Mm. Okay. And this uh, arises uh, majorly, like we said from the beginning, mm. from their inability to read the frequently asking question and okay. the user guide. Okay. Yes. But uh, what we will advise people is that uh, if in the course of using the CRP, mm. you get stalked along the line, mm. there are help lines indicated mm. on the platform mm. where you can always call and ask for assistance. Mm. There is also email, dedicated email for such complaints where mm. you can lodge complaints. Okay. Uh, so those ones are available. Mm. The reason is that uh, we want to make sure that uh, the end-to-end -end registration, mm. uh, electronic registration mm. is functional. Mm. We don't encourage people to come to us. We will expect that from the comfort of your home mm. or your office, mm. you can register the company and the certificate will be sent to you. Mm. So that is the reason why those helplines are there, why there is a dedicated email mm. also on the platform. And we do understand that the helplines from now runs from 8 a.m. in the morning to 4 p.m. in the evening. That's the time you can call and get a quick response. For those who will be saying, when are we going to have a 24-hour uh, uh, helpline? Well, the relevant department are mm. already uh, considering uh, that option. Mm. Because uh, if we can register a company from home at any time, we should be also be able to call at any time. Yeah, that it? that yeah. is uh, yeah. that is yeah. that is actually the target. Mm. But for now, because uh, staff work between eight and four p.m. Mm. Uh, for the helplines, if you call mm. outside those period, mm. there might not be somebody to pick mm. and address your problem. Mm. Mm. So we will advise that until the framework for twenty-four hour mm. helpline is activated. Mm. They should try to call within uh, the hours of 8 in the morning and 4 in the afternoon. Okay. All right. Um, finally, what would you say to the newcomers who are go about to register their company? Well, we uh, try to encourage them mm. uh, that they should use the platform. Mm. Uh, the platform was meant for them. It was meant to make things easier for them. But like any other new process, mm. we recognize that there could be challenges mm. uh, in using the platform for now. Mm. So people should be patient uh, with the new this thing. Mm. Like we said, where you have problem, you escalate it through the helpline or through the email desk. Mm. We are hoping that uh, as we go on, we will recognize uh, challenges that will arise in the course of using the, this thing and we will address them over time. Our target is that uh, uh, very soon people will be able to register the company within four hours. So that's what we are heading to as we address operational challenges uh, as they come. How prompt does the commission respond to complaints? Well, uh, depending on whether the people uh, uh, are on the desk at, at the other time, like we say, mm. uh, if it is during working hours, as soon as uh, they are able to pick your your call, mm. if it is something okay. they can address, maybe tell you to do this or do that, mm. they will uh, tell you to do that on the spot. Okay. But if your problem would require that they need to consult other departments, then uh, they will require time. 
Okay. So depending on the complexity of the problem that you have raised, okay. uh, uh, you will be responded to within a reasonable time. But uh, at any point in time, we are not conceiving that it should exceed uh, 24 hours. All right. Uh, Mr. Justin Nidia, Director of Board Secretariat, Corporate Affairs Commission, thank you very much indeed for your time as always. Thank you. And that's where we wrap up this week's edition of the program CAC Weekly. We do hope you enjoyed watching. For comments and inquiries, please take advantage of our social media handles and our helpline. Remember, you can reach us on Twitter at CAC Nigeria 1. On Instagram and Facebook, it is Corporate Affairs Commission. And our email is cservice at cac.gov.ng. Our website is at www.cac.gov.ng. You can also reach us via our helplines on 081-822-99016 or 081-822-98971. 090-874-01598 or 090-874-01599 and 090-874-01600. Do join us next week for another interesting edition of the program. Same time, same station. From me, Amina Jabril and the whole team here. It is bye for now.